When Abraham was called by God to be a father of many nations, him and his wife were barren, old, and disqualified by the world's standards. Yet God gave him the miracle of a son called Isaac. And when Isaac had grown up, God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac on an altar. The only way that he could have seen his fulfillment of being a father was about to be taken away from him. And yet in obedience, he followed the voice of God because he preferred to be in the will of God than doing it his own way of pursuing a dream. And God honored him and saved Isaac and then fulfilled his ultimate dream of being the father of many nations. And sometimes God calls you to lay down your dreams in order to reach them. When I was eight years old, I got introduced to high jump. It was the first time in my life I felt free and easy and having purpose of why I was so tall. And I got off the high jump bags and I asked the age manager of my athletics club, what is the Australian record? And they said one meter 98. And I said, I am going to be the first Australian woman to jump over two meters and I'll go to an Olympics one day. Maybe that's why I'm so tall. Fast forward until 2017. I'm 20 years old. I'm training in Europe with an Olympic coach in the best facilities in the world. And yet I was so dissatisfied. I'd pursued the dream my own way and I'd left God out of it. I was believing the lie that I was only as valuable as my highest jump. When I recognized that it was a decision between God and sport, I made the decision to choose God because I realized that no high jump bar, no personal best, no performance would ever fulfill my heart. But the love of God, that's what brings the fire and passion in life. And so when I made that decision, I laid down my sport on the altar, just like Isaac. And God said, Nicola, I want you to go back into the sports world, but this time do it my way. And I had such a joy and peace in that moment. I didn't know really where to begin, so I just started serving him. I told everyone about Jesus on the athletics track, in the gym, online, even when they didn't ask for it. I gave it to them <laughs> because I couldn't withhold my purpose and passion for life. And God kept on honoring me in that. My personal best year by year just increased and increased and increased. So fast forward to this year and at the Olympic trials in Sydney, I went into the stadium and I had such a purpose and a passion to jump. There was immovable peace, unshakable hope. And in joy, I jumped two meters for the first time in Australian history. But even better than that, every newspaper and television channel was there that day because it was the Olympic trials. And they not only broadcasted my jump to the nation, they shared my testimony. And God was honored in every newspaper and every TV. And at the height of my career, with a world ranking of number one, I heard God's whisper again to say, go to Europe before the Olympics. And that was the opposite of what everyone was telling me to do. The risk of traveling in the pandemic could potentially jeopardize my Olympics. But I considered it better to be in His will and potentially underperform at the Olympics than do an Olympics without Him and be successful. And so I boarded the plane and came to Switzerland and spent the month here preparing before Japan. And when I came into the Olympics, I had such a determination and a love in my heart 
to make Him known. It was free and fun because it was done His way, not my way. And as I was jumping in the stadium of stadiums at the Olympics, it was like I was a child again, like I was eight years old and I was just jumping into my father's arms. It was free and I jumped the highest I'd ever jumped in my life. And she gets over it! She gets over it! Wow! I jumped 2 meters zero 2 and broke the national record again. And I got the silver medal. The first silver medal in Australian high jump history for women since um, 1960s. So we're going back for a long time. I never even dreamed of making an Olympic podium before. That eight-year-old dream didn't include it because I knew in my own strength I wouldn't be able to reach it. But Jesus makes all things new. And when I was there, I could experience my dream in purity, like God had always intended it. My value wasn't based on how high I jumped. I was doing it in freedom and in perfect love. In the end, high jump was always given to me to make his love known. It was always his will. He was there when I tried it for the first time. He was there before my mother had even birthed me. He was with me and had this plan over my life. And sometimes it requires surrendering your dreams and your hopes and your plans. But when you do, you experience his power in you. Whatever it takes, wherever he calls you, whatever you become, whether people persecute you, they reject you, they make fun of you, no barrier can stop you when the will of God is in you and you know that you are living a life for Him. You overcome every single barrier when you lay down your life because you take up His. It's not what you have to bring to the table. Jesus created miracles of feeding thousands of people with a few loaves and fishes. And sometimes I just have to give my all to him. But in his hands, he feeds millions of people with a testimony that allows them to dream again. Sometimes you give Jesus everything and he is all that you have. But in him, you have all you have ever needed. I want to encourage you. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all else will be added. Live that out in your life and see your dreams not only impact your family, community, and nation, but impact people's eternity.